planning and preparation. Are they the keys to a good painting? I think so. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I plan an oil over watercolour painting and on how I choose my colour scheme. Hi, I'm Marion Dutton and I love to paint in oil, acrylic and watercolour, a real mixed bag of goodies. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you and you like a little variety in your life, then do consider subscribing to the channel. Yes, it is fun to be spontaneous and throw colours onto the canvas without planning or too much preparation and to have that childlike curiosity and experimentation. But many of us, myself included, find that spontaneity can really work against us and result in a chaotic and unharmonious painting. I have found that a little planning with both tones and colour can really make a difference to the success of my work. In order to plan where I want to place my lights and darks, I'm just doing a tonal study with this swan. I'm working on watercolour paper and it's my intention just to do a very, very quick tonal study deciding where my lights and darks are and then I want to then decide on some colour swatches. So we're going to use the same image to do both a tonal study and then a colour study. And because this is a study, I'm just writing little notes for myself and this will just serve as a reminder when we come to do the main painting. So I'm going to use a triadic colour scheme, which basically means that if you look at the colour wheel, these colours will sit on a triangle. And so the colours I'm choosing are quinacridone gold, some magenta and some turquoise. Using a colour wheel can really help with your choices of colour schemes. A few months ago, I bought this book by Stephen Quiller called Colour Choices. And this book has really inspired me to try different colour schemes. It really is an excellent book. What's absolutely fabulous about this book, apart from the fact that it does give you lots of different colour schemes to try and different colour palettes to have a go at, it also came inside with its own colour wheel. Now I've laminated mine so that I can use it daily and have it to hand. Um, and again, what I absolutely love about this is the fact that it does actually have the paint names on here as well, rather than a standard colour, um, sorry, a standard colour wheel that just has, um, you know, the red or the yellow or green or whatever. This actually does have the um, name of the colour, Hooker's Green, Viridian, um, Phalo, Turquoise, etc. So it really is super helpful for, um, regardless of whatever medium you're using, whether that's oil, acrylic or watercolour, I found that this is really, really helpful with um, selecting your colours. I took it a little further and I made myself this little triangle and that way then I'm able to just turn that and come up with a different triadic colour scheme. So anything where these points are actually sitting on that colour wheel really does help me with those choices. And for this particular swan painting, that's exactly what I did. I wanted sort of the golds and warmths um, sort of from those orange colours. And for that, that led me to going with turquoise and magenta. So again, this is a really use, useful um, book, really, really useful book in terms of practical use um, with colour theory. Um, and I will put a link to this in the description box below so that you can um, possibly grab your own copy as well. And from those three colours, I can mix an array of other tones and values. I wet my paper and 
go straight over those pencil lines again this is just a study it's just to give me a map to use in the final painting So this is just a chance to play and experiment with those tones. I'm really liking that sort of warm area using that quinacridone gold. And then I want to switch to some of that turquoise and use that in a cooler area, sort of have that lovely contrast of warm and cool. play around with a little bit of splattering again this is all about just testing and experimenting with those colors at this point I decide it needs a little something else that just the gold and the turquoise isn't going to be quite enough so I'm adding a little burnt sienna, still keeping it within that warm family. And then into some magenta for some real strong colour in that sky area. And so at this point I feel quite happy with my palette of colours and I've narrowed the colours down to quinacridone gold, raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber and then some magenta and turquoise to just contrast with those warmer tones. So once I'd done the tonal study and then followed along with that colour study, I was really able to figure out where my lights and darks were going to go on this particular painting. So now I'm going to show you how I use those colours to create this really lovely loose background and also add a little salt to create some texture. Okay, I'm going to begin working upside down. I want to establish um, some of the darks and lights in the uh, sky area. So I'm going to start by wetting the area and I've got the board on a little bit of a tilt. And we'll start with our quinacridone gold. And get some nice lighter colours in there to begin with. Plenty of water and let this paint run. Now whilst that's wet I'm going to go into a little bit of the magenta. We'll throw in a little of that as well. And then I'm going to go into some burnt umber, a little burnt sienna as well. And into that we will add some of that turquoise and this is going to give us a nice dark colour. I'm not worrying about going over the wings slightly because I know that the oil paint will be nice and opaque. While that is drying, I am going to tilt the board and just get some interesting marks. Okay, so this is really starting to dry now. We've still got a little bit of shine on. I've been doing a little spraying um, and just tilting the board and letting just letting stuff happen. So I'm going to just try a little bit of salt. Again, if I just put a little bit in my hand and then I can just control where I'm going to place this. Just trying to create a little bit of texture in that background. Okay, now we need to let this completely dry before we move on to do the next part. 
Okay, this is dry and I've brushed all the salt away. And as you can see, we've got some absolutely gorgeous um, colours and patterns going on. Remember, we wanted it much darker here and then going into that light. And we've managed to achieve that. But I'm rather loving some of these little splatters that we've got on here um, from the salt. Um, I really do think that as this painting develops, that's going to look like splashes from the water. So we're going to do the same now at the bottom with the, the water. We're going to get some um, lovely colours in here. Just go with the flow, as they say, and uh, let's see what we get. I'm using the same colours. I'm going to start with the lighter colours and then make sure we've got that lovely strong dark right underneath. And once again, I'm going to add some salt into this wet watercolour and let's just see what we get. And here is the final background and the water area as well. And as you can see, we've got some really beautiful effects. Using the exact same colours, I'm going to continue blocking in the swan. And of course, no watercolour is complete without a little bit of splattering. And here is the finished painting once I've actually done all the oil painting. So we start with those gorgeous loose watercolour washes, let that dry and then switch to oils to do all those gorgeous details. I really do hope you've enjoyed this background tutorial and it's given you a little bit of ideas how you can plan and prepare and also choose a really good colour scheme for your next painting. The full tutorial of this swan is available on the Mazar Academy and I will attach a link to that in the description box below. I'm really enjoying using oil over watercolour. I'm really finding that I'm getting the benefits of both worlds, the best of both worlds, from those gorgeous transparent washes to then switch into creamy oils for detail and final touches. Remember, if you are getting value from these lessons and you are enjoying the content on this channel, don't forget to do all that good stuff, like, thumbs up, and add a comment down below because it allows YouTube to know you're enjoying the content and it helps the channel grow. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.